In the year 1961, America began planning for its journey to the moon. This expedition, also known as Project Apollo, was a wild success in both science and technology. We built and flew the largest rocket in the world, learned how to live and work in space, and gained insights not only into the origin of the moon, but Earth as well. Oh, and we also found out that the moon can be quite a fun place to be. But in the face of huge financial costs and interest in developing the space shuttle, we left the moon on December 14, 1972 and have never been back since. Okay, Houston, as I stand out here in the wonders of the unknown at Hadley, I sort of realize there's a fundamental truth to our nature. Man must explore. In 2004, NASA was given a deadline to return to the moon by the year 2020. We've already been there, so it should be easy, right? Well, not quite. Not only do we want to go back to the moon, we want to go one step further and settle it. This is because the moon is an excellent place to test new technologies and techniques for exploring even more distant destinations. We need to develop a permanent outpost where humans can live, eat, and rest in a semi-self-sufficient way. But, before we think about settlement, we need to think about reliable transportation. Suppose you're about to go on a long road trip from Los Angeles to New York. Do you typically carry all of the gas you'll need for the trip with you? Of course not. That's because the more gas you carry with you, the bigger the car you need for all of it. Well, and then you need more gas to propel that larger car, and so on and so forth. Oh, and don't forget about your luggage, which you'll barely have any room for. So what is the solution? Gas stations, of course. By having the ability to refuel on our way, we are able to drive these, and not these. You can apply the same reasoning to spaceships. The trip from the Earth to the Moon is the ultimate road trip, almost 240,000 miles. In our space travels, we have always carried all of the fuel we will need with us. But what if we place fueling stations on orbit around the Earth and the Moon? Here's one example concept of an automated, on-orbit fueling depot. Utilizing depots like this will allow us to fit more useful payload on our spacecraft and open the door to reusable space transportation instead of expendable vehicles. This will have the additional benefit of driving costs down, affording more frequent trips to the moon. And when we're building homes and laboratories on the moon, we need all of the extra space and materials we can get. Looked like it was going a million miles, but it really didn't. <laughs> Isn't it? 